Jake Ludington here at HP Discover in Barcelona, and I'm here with Les Stewart, and we're going to talk a little bit about VAN. Can you unpack what VAN is and what it means in the context of networking? Absolutely I can. VAN is a framework for accelerating service and application delivery. It's a framework that provides access through an API layer, but there are real tangible solutions and products below that, and that's exactly what I'm responsible for. So if you were to look at the VAN framework, it extends from the server and application edge all the way through the network fabric. So at one side, what we're doing to accelerate service delivery is um, accelerating the way that virtual machines show up on the network. Because today, there is a, a gap between the time when an application or a, a virtual machine is ready to be deployed and the network is ready to accept it. So quite often, that top of the rack switch needs to be provisioned with the pri proper ACLs, quality of service, other networking parameters. And then in the case that that V VM needs to move from one enclosure to another enclosure, from one top of rack connection to another top of rack connection, there's a tear down and setup that needs to occur. And that delay can be minutes, um, typically it's days, and in worst cases we've seen um, weeks just due to process and change control. What we're doing is making that seconds, because what we do is we allow the IT administrator through a tool called VAN Connection Manager, an IMC plugin, to create a connection profile in IMC. He creates several connection profiles, one for mail, SAP, Exchange, video conferencing, or just some examples. Then he exposes those through our plugin for the hypervisor. So for vCenter, we have a plugin. So when the systems or application administrator uses vCenter, for instance, or Microsoft's tool, there will be a new tab, IMC, when they're working with a virtual machine. And then they can choose the connection profile appropriate to the VM they're working on. When they hit the deploy button, the VM announces itself, IMC finds it, finds, figures out what the top of the rack um, uh, switch is, what interface, and provisions it according to what's in the um, connection profile. Now, is it fair to say that this uh, helps eliminate some of the, the mistakes network administrators can, can run into? 100%. And it, more importantly, it speeds it because the systems admin can deploy his application, his workload, and start to um, deliver his service immediately. He doesn't have to wait for IT to set up anything for him. And IT has complete control and visibility of the consumption of that uh, connection profile and the configuration um, on the uh, devices that he's um, in charge of. Now that's just the, the connection piece. Then you've got the entire network fabric. And so the VAN framework works across the entire network fabric as well. So in one area, what we're doing is the really the, the heavy data center interconnect te technologies. So um, that layer two, layer three bridging that we do with something like EVI or Trill and SPV uh, configuration and monitoring, as well as FCOE. So we have a, a module, a VAN module called the VAN Fabric Manager that um, manages those data center interconnect technologies. But what's really sexy and really cool is this new module called the Resource Automation Manager. And that is a tool that allows you to build a model of the service that you want to deliver over your existing infrastructure. Now, that can take into, a con into context the physical as well as virtual context that exists on your network. So at a simple level on the virtual context, VLANs. But at a, at a higher level, um, we're planning to incorporate things like um, OpenFlow technology, NFV technology. Um, then, there's, then you've got MDC, the multi-device context, IRF. Um, um, things, overlay technologies will come into play here. So imagine a Visio-like tool 
where you can drag in an access switch, drag in a controller, drag in a router, drag in a firewall, drag in a load balancer, drag in a server, uh, an exchange server, and you can connect them with links. This is the mod, and then you can define the properties uh, for each of those objects, so you can tune. What you've just built is a model of the service that you want to deliver for Link. Let's and, I, and, and I assume these are all these are all things that the uh, the modeling tool is aware of in your existing network. Uh, well, that comes here comes the next step. First, I want to define the model. Then, what you will wind up doing in the same tool is overlaying the model over the physical network, over your physical topology, your existing network. And, and doing what's called a match and a simulation to see can that model actually be deployed on my physical network? Are there any conflicts? What v, you know, from things like ACL conflicts to VLAN conflicts, maybe simple syntax, or maybe it's a, a version of OS on the device that no, doesn't support the feature that you want to implement. It'll let you know and it'll allow you to do a correction, um, uh, remediate or correct it before you get to the, the real step of hitting that deploy button to deploy that service model onto your physical network. Then we save it into a catalog so that you can reuse it and perhaps deploy it to a different zone or part of your network. And then lastly is SDN um, and the management of OpenFlow devices open flow controllers, as well as the applications that are talking to the controller. And so this is another module that plugs into IMC. So these, these, real, these four components that from the connection piece, doing the VM uh, connection profiles, to the fabric piece, doing the data center interconnect, to the resource automation, to the SDN manager, those really comprise our van management solutions accelerating service delivery. So it sounds like you've just made the uh, network administrator's job a whole lot easier. I, we're trying to, because really the goal here, one of the goals I believe, um, and that I'm seeing a lot more of, I have personally have believed this for, uh, for some time, but now I'm really starting to see, is w w abstracting the CLI. All right, um, changing configuration errors, um, Years ago, seven years ago, were, um, was responsible for 69% of downtime. Another analyst just two years ago said that it's up to 82%. So I don't care what level of certification you have on anybody's CLI, we need to abstract the CLI and let tools do the provisioning, let tools do the automation, let tools do the syntax and compliance checking. So yes, we're trying to make it easier in a lot of senses. Make it easier just for the IT administrator to get um, something done, but make it easier for the business to ensure the delivery of services. All right, well thanks Les. Thanks Jake, thanks for the time.